Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we just have a little bit of setup and some playtime with the cat to do, and then we'll be on. Uh, just let me know how I sound. Uh, let me know how the um, background music is compared to my voice music. Or voice music? Yeah, that's right. My voice is music. Uh, <laughs> compared to my voice. And if you can hear me, post an emoji of a... An otter. Post an emoji of an otter. I think there's an otter emoji. Alright, well, I'm gonna play with Jimbo, and I'll be on in just a moment. Lol, did I put the wrong time, Amy? That's, that's funny. Oops. All right, well, he's being the total bum. So we're gonna get rocking and rolling.
now he wants to play. That's not okay, bro. <laughs> okay. Alright, Jimbo. We're gonna switch. Disney music's too loud. Here, I'll, I'll turn it down on the thing so I can. There we go. How's that? I think that's better. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let's do it, buddy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I hope you are having a great day. I did the classic Lou. Started the stream without cleaning my glasses. I don't know why I always do that, but it seems like something that is a, a continuous bad habit for me. So maybe it's something I got to work on. Uh, hey, everybody. Yeah, Jimbo didn't want to play. I don't know. He, I mean, he played a little bit in the beginning. Um... Hey everybody! Today, uh, today's live stream, we're going to be crocheting a chocolate cake. See, it's my mom's birthday tomorrow, and her favorite cake is chocolate cake. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a chocolate cake uh, designed pattern on this live stream. So we're going to be actually designing the pattern live today. I do not have a pattern written for this at all, uh, but I will after this live stream. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. It'll just be like a weird design along. Hopefully it'll go well. After the stream is over, I'm going to put it on the website as a pattern for members. Um, I'll probably make it free for like today and tomorrow or something to maybe test it out. And then I'll leave it up for members. Uh, and yeah, that's the plan. Uh, obviously I'll be going through the pattern live on camera because I'm figuring it out live. Um, I do have a pretty good idea of how to do it, but I'm not 100% sure yet. My basic idea is that I want to do a chocolate cake with white uh, frosting along the edges of the top and the edges of the base, and then do uh, and do strawberry um, like accents on the center on the top of the cake uh, using bobble stitches. That's my plan for right now. But we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Uh, and please consider crocheting along with me. In fact, if you like what's going on here and you want to help support, um, there are a few different ways you can do so. The first is just like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, and just crochet along with me. Just hang out and crochet. If you want to crochet with me, um, you'll need the following materials. I'm just going to be using brown yarn and white yarn probably as the main bits. I'll need a little bit of red and a little bit of green for the strawberries. Um, and then I might need some safety eyes. I'll probably use eight millimeter and then probably some black thread for the mouth. Um, but, oh, and a crochet hook, of course, we're going to be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. I'm using all the materials from our brand new seasonal crochet kit. I feel like the music totally stopped. Did it? It's just like really quiet. There we go. I don't know why it got so quiet, but there it is fixed. Um, this is all from our new seasonal crochet kit. Whoop. Hold on, I gotta close it back up. Sweet stitches. It's our brand new seasonal crochet kit that has all the materials to make a bunch of different sweet themed patterns like donuts and uh, chocolate covered strawberries and now chocolate cakes and uh, most newly little eclairs. Um, this is a brand new pattern that is available now on the website. Uh, you can get it by going to the uh, Sweet Stitches homepage at clubcrochet.com slash sweet stitches. Um, obviously every all these patterns come with the seasonal kit, um, but it's also they're also all available with a Club Crochet membership if you'd like to. Um, it's a great way to support the channel. It is uh, the, uh, yeah, you get access to my full library of tutorials. I mean, what else is there to say? It, it's a lot of patterns um, that you get access to. One of which is actually this little miniature pie pattern, which is out here right now because it is uh, the beginning of our brand new uh, uh, Club Crochet Challenge. That's right, the Club Crochet Challenge is back on, baby. And this challenge's theme is Cutie Pie 
We're making adorable pies. That's the whole challenge. Make cute pies, crochet one, post a picture of it. Um, you can either post it on Instagram with hashtag club crochet challenge, or you can post it on the Discord channel. Um, there is, or the Discord server, there is a channel in that server called crochet challenge that you can post it to. The four, my four favorite cute pies, the four cutest pies are going to uh, go up in a poll and then you will vote on your favorite of the four pies. And then that, the best pie of them all will get a free seasonal crochet kit for next season's kit, which is going to be um, uh, titled Spacecrafts. I'm super excited about it. This is actually kind of maybe the first you're hearing about it. I don't know. I have been talking a little bit about it in the stream, so you might be have heard of it. Um, but I'm very excited about it, and yeah, it's going to be the really cool kit. I'm really excited. But yeah, if you want to uh, learn more about that, just go to clubcrochet.com slash challenge and uh, crochet a little pie and post a picture of it. Um, all the rules are up there, uh, and obviously it's totally free to, to, uh, to enter the challenge too. Okay, well, let's throw these pies off to the sides. Uh, we got two people supporting already. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like to support this channel and you want to monetarily outside of memberships, there's of course kits and merch in the store. Um, you can find merch uh, down at the bottom of this video um, as well. But another way to support if you'd like to uh, monetarily is by uh, tipping. You can tip by going to clubcrochet.com slash tip. And if you tip, I'll put something out on camera today for you. Now, before I even do that, let me throw all these cute pins. These are all pins available in the shop, by the way. Let me put all these to the side. Um, before I even put out the awesome, uh, the, the things on screen for the people that have tipped, thank you so much. We'll get to that in just a second. I just wanna show um, some cool uh, fan mail I got. Um, I hope you're in the chat. Tig, are you in the chat? Yes, you are. Um, so I went to my P.O. box. So I have a P.O. box where you can send things to if you'd like to. Um, the address for it is at the bottom of the email notification. So if you get an email notification, the address is at the bottom there. And I went to the mailbox and I realized there was a package in there. And I was like, what? Who sent me a package? Because I didn't even realize that anybody really knew what this address was. And I found this adorable goblin that Tig made for my birthday. Isn't that so cute? It also comes with a little tiny gift. It's so cute. I am I just, I love it so much. So Tig, if you're in the chat right now, which I think I saw you in the chat a second ago, thank you so, so much. This absolutely made my day. Um, it was really, really cool to see. And I'm going to throw it into the background of the live streams uh, for today. And I'll probably toss it up back here afterwards. Um, it really meant a lot to me. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a really, really nice surprise. And uh, yeah, it just totally made my day. So thank you. Um, there you are, Ty. Yes, yeah, I got the letter. Thank you. It really meant a lot. So we're going to go ahead and throw this adorable goblin in the background. If you guys, uh, Ty, if you have a name for your goblin, uh, let us know what you've named your goblin. Um, and if you want to send me fan mail, you totally can. Uh, the, like I said, the uh, box, uh, the PO box is in the um, the bottom of the email newsletters. Uh, I just never really thought anybody would want to send me anything, but that was really cool. Um, okay. Next uh, thing is to say thank you so much to the people that have supported before the stream has even started. So. Special thanks to Tina and Curious Snail. You guys rock. Thank you for tipping. Let's go ahead and throw a few things on camera for you. Um, let's see. We need to throw some new stuff out there that we didn't throw out last week. So, oh, let's do this. We haven't had this guy out for a while. And, oh, actually, you know what? That's not really adorable. Maybe we want something a little cuter. Let's see. Something kind of cute. This is perfect. We'll throw one of these out from each of you. This is perfect. So, uh, you guys get twins because you both supported at the same time ahead of the stream. So, to Tina and a Curious Snail, 
Thank you so much for your support. We're gonna throw these adorable um, uh, snowy plovers out on screen for you. Um, and they are actually secretly burbs, so don't you worry about that. I'm gonna throw these out in the background. If you'd like to add anything to the background, all you need to do is tip. Uh, go to clubcrochet.com slash tip. Okay, well, let's get crocheting. And like I said before, this is going to be off the dome. So I am making this up as I go. So if I mess up, that's just the way things go. Um, I do have kind of an idea of how I will make a cake because I've, I have made cakes before, um, but I've never done a pattern for one. Um, hey, actually, Cooper, if you're in the chat or anybody in the chat that wants to help uh, to write this pattern down, that would be super helpful. Not necessary, though. If you don't, if no one can write it down, that's totally okay. I will um, go ahead and write it down after the live stream so that, while, like, while it's fresh in my memory. So I'm going to start with my brown yarn here. Grab that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm also going to grab ahead of schedule. We need our red yarn and we need a little bit of our green yarn just before we even get rock and rolling because I know it's going to come up faster than I think it is for our bobble stitches. So we'll throw those to the side, throw that white yarn back there. Um, we might need some of this white yarn too, but we'll come grab those a little later. And get back to our brown yarn. And yeah, let's rock and roll. Okay. So I'm gonna start with a magic loop method. And I probably won't be going into extreme detail in this pattern, uh, or in this video rather, just because um, I already have it prepared. You're the best, Cooper, thank you so much. Um, I probably won't go into extreme detail on this pattern. I will go into detail for certain aspects of this pattern that are a little bit more difficult than others. But a lot of it, Jimbo is going crazy. Hold on. Oh, he stopped. He was going nuts for a second. I could hear him playing on his on that black box. He loves playing on that box. That's so funny. Okay. Um Okay, well, let's get let's actually get crocheting. Uh we're going to start by I'm going to start with six single crochets into the magic loop. Um this pattern shouldn't be too difficult. I think if it goes the way I think it's going to be going, I will probably give this an easy to medium level difficulty. I think the bobble stitches are going to make it a little difficult. Um, I haven't really come up in my head yet with how the bottom of this cake is going to go. I was thinking about adding it to a plate, but I'm not totally sure. Okay, so that's going to be the first round of stitches. Now I'm going to use the stitch marker because I want it to be visible in the video where the ends of the rounds are. but. What would be super helpful for that is if I had some extra yarn. Oh, here we go. So we'll use a little bit of this yellow yarn um, just to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. There we go. Okay. So I get to name the goblin whatever I want to. Oh man, I came up with a really good goblin name yesterday, actually. I think it was like Chorb Rumbly or something. I said I, I was driving home from dinner with my brother and I and I was like I I don't know, I, I just didn't put music on and I was just thinking of a goblin name. I, I I don't I have no way to tell you why that happened. It just happened like that. Uh and I think I came up with Chorb Rumbly. So Chorb Rumbly is the name of <laughs> this goblin. Hello, Chorb. I'll definitely remember your name. <laughs> it won't be forgotten. <laughs> Chorb Rumbly. Da, 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 da. Take your card off. Jill, yes, you should. Actually, you shouldn't even need to enter your card when you sign up for the um, when you use the code to sign up for the membership, I think you might be able to do it without even using your card. Um, there is a way to delete your card from the uh, website so that it doesn't get charged again. I'm not 100% sure how to do it, but I do know that if you um, email contact at clubcrochet.com, 
it will uh we can give you we can help you out with that um i'm pretty sure there's a way to do it though and if there's not i'll make a way because that just seems like it would make sense okay so i just finished round two and i didn't explain it at all so things are going real good for me um round two was an increase into each stitch so single crochet one uh, single crochet six times for round one we're working in the round without turning and round two was single uh, do an increase or two single crochets into every stitch around to get up to 12 stitches around so pretty pretty standard way to start the amigurumi uh normally all right now round three i'm just going to increase it up again the basic idea here is i'm going to increase it up to probably about probably about 30 stitches. So it'll probably be about this wide by the end, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, maybe even a little bit more than 30 stitches, but we're gonna be uh, increasing it up to that stitch count that we want it to be. So our next round, we're gonna increase up again to 18 stitches around by doing a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the next stitch repeating that six times around to get from 12 stitches to 18 stitches around. Can you tell that I say that quite a lot? I, I, this is a very, um, uh, this is a very normal way for me to start my amigurumi. And I actually use that like vocabulary, the way I just said that, I say that quite often in my tutorials. I just wrote down yesterday, um, the instructions for the next crochet pattern that I'll be recording. Um, hopefully this weekend, I think that it still needs a little bit of work uh, to just like, usually I like to put in a lot of work into my patterns, uh, like especially the complicated ones to really think it through before I record the video. Because once I record the video tutorial, you know, it's really hard to like redo it. So I've been working on the ice cream pattern a lot uh, this week. It's a, well, you know, it's really not that long. I thought it was going to be a lot longer. It was about four pages, I think, because I added in extra instructions for making a few different types of like cone for the ice cream and stuff like that. Um, it's got a few little secrets and bells and whistles to it. Uh, this is going to be the, the harder, harder pattern for the season. Um, I do quotes for harder because there's going to be uh, options for this pattern to make it easier. So if you don't want to make the difficult version, you can. So that's kind of the idea. Um, what did we end up naming the strawberry from last week? I need to do a vote for that. That is, thank you for reminding me because that was definitely uh, the plan for today. I wanted to run through those with you and uh, we could choose one together or choose a few together and then do a vote for it because I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, so I'll get to that uh, maybe after like the first part of this uh, cake pattern when we get to the part where we're just going to be crocheting it down. Um, but let's continue on from here first. So we got round one, two, and three. That's the end of round three. We're going to continue on to round four. Round four, we're just going to increase it up one more time. So we're going up from 18 stitches up to 24. Would that be correct? I believe that's right. Um, 18 to 24 stitches, but to do that, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increased stitch repeated six times around. So we're going to go over and over again, two single crochets and then increase one all the way around. So one and two, and then an increase one and two. Like that. And we're going to just repeat that all the way around to go up to 24 stitches around. Yeah. Let's hope that there's no earthquakes in this live stream. Uh, if you were around for, well, I kind of mumbled that sentence out. If you were around for the last live stream last week, um, we did, we had an earthquake in the live stream. It was very spooky, kind of shook the whole stream up. Ha <laughs> ha. No, but seriously, it did. It was, it was a spooky one. Turned out it was only seven miles away from the house. So that's why it kind of, kind of spooked us. Kind of spooked us a little bit. Hey, Morgana, how are you? Hope you're having a great day.
Yeah, I'm not sure what size eyes and what kind of face. I think because this is for my mom, I think we're going to probably do like maybe more of a simple smile kind of face for this. But I'm not sure yet. Let me think it through a little bit more. Okay, so we just finished round four. We're up to 24 stitches around. Now we're on to round five where we're gonna increase it up yet again to 30 stitches around. But this round, I'm also going to be adding our bobble stitches to add um, to add strawberries. I think it'd be, just, just to add a little bit more, uh, I don't know, interesting aspects to this cake so it's not just like a plain chocolate cake. I think it'd be fun to add some strawberries to the cake. And the best way I think to do that is probably just use bobble stitches. So what we're gonna do, for this round is we're going to do one single crochet, one mini bobble stitch in red and green. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Then another single crochet and then an increased stitch. And then we're going to repeat that, uh, that stitch repeat all the way around six times to go all the way around the piece. And it's going to increase our stitch count up to 30 stitches around. And we're going to be adding uh, six strawberries all the way around the piece. There are two different ways we can do these strawberries and I'll show you, <clears throat> I'll show you the easy method and then I'll show you the more difficult way to do it, which is I think the way I'm going to be doing it in this, um, because I want them to look like strawberries with the little green on them too. So let's give that a shot. We're going to start by doing one single crochet into the first. And before I even finish that single crochet, we're going to grab our red yarn here. And I'm going to start by just doing a mini bobble in red, just so I can show you how the mini bobble is done. Then we're going to undo that and do it again in the second technique to show you a little bit trickier way to do it. So to make our mini bobble in red, I'm just going to crochet around our red to finish that single crochet up and lock our red into place like that. And then for a mini bobble, hopefully this stays in focus the whole video. I didn't really think about that. We're going to yarn over with red. We're going to go into the next stitch, which is going to be right here. Make sure you go under the tail end uh, attached to the brown yarn as you go through this. Yarn over with red and pull it through the stitch like that. Then yarn over with red again and pull through just two loops on the hook, one and two like that. We'll then repeat that process two more times. We're just gonna do mini bobbles in this video. Um, I think they'll be good enough. You can do bulky bobbles and stuff if you wanna repeat that process more than three times, but I think mini bobbles should be enough. So I'm gonna repeat that process two more times. We're gonna yarn over and then go into the same exact stitch right here. Yarn over again with the red and pull that through. And then yarn over and pull through two loops again, one and two two like that. We're going to do that repeat one more time to finish up our mini bobble yarn over into the same exact stitch yarn over again with our red pull it through then going over the stitch yarn over and pull through two one and two like that. To finish up a mini bobble we're going to switch over to our main color our brown yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. You should have three red and one brown loop like that. And that's gonna be our first way to add strawberries. And that'll add just a cute little red strawberry or cherry or whatever you want it to be um, along the edge of our cake. But I think I want this to look a little bit more like a strawberry. So I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna try my second technique for making these strawberries a little bit different. Now, by the way, as I'm going through this, if you want a um, more detailed tutorial about how to do a bobble stitch, I have a tutorial at clubcrochet.com slash bobble or just B-O will get you there. Clubcrochet.com slash B-O should get you to the tutorial. Um, it's a full length video tutorial. It shows you a few different ways to do bobbles and how to customize them like how we're doing right now. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding green to that bobble to uh, make it look more like a strawberry. So I'm gonna grab my green yarn with this and we're gonna hold both the green and the red down and then finish our single crochet in brown like that so that the top of the stitch is brown and now we have both green and red to work with for this mini bobble so the first part is going to be the exact same as before we're going to yarn over with red we're going to hold our two other colors our brown and our green over the crochet stitch so that we work around these stitches as we go through this process 
but we'll yarn over thread, go into the next stitch and yarn over again with red and pull that through the stitch like that. So we have two loops of red on our hook. And then we're gonna flip, take this green yarn and go under the two other colors of yarn like that, yarn over with green and then pull that through the two loops on the hook, one and two like that. And then we're just gonna repeat that same process. All, everything that we just did, we're gonna repeat again. Hold on, I need to get that red through a little bit better. We're gonna repeat all everything that we just did again. Yarn over with our red. Uh, go into the stitch. Yarn over again with red and pull it through. So we have two loops of red and then switch over so that green is under the red. Yarn over with green and pull through two loops with green. Okay, so there's one, two. Let's do that repeat one last time. And this should make our strawberries look really cute. We yarn over with red again, into the stitch, yarn over with red and pull it through. So we have two loops of red and then switch to green and pull through one and two with green. Like that. We'll pull a little tighter. Okay, now I think this should make a pretty cute strawberry. So now we can switch over so that brown, so let's see how I flip brown under the two colors. And I'll yarn over with our brown yarn and pull through all the loops on the hook with brown to finish that bobble stitch. Half with green, half with red. Now it might have been good to do this the other way around so that the strawberries were facing out. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see how this looks though. Uh, okay, so that's our bobble stitch. Next we're going to just do a single crochet into the next stitch and I'm just going to work around these, uh, the yarn just to keep them locked into place just for that one stitch and then I'm just going to leave them hanging off to the side for when we get to the other one. And then the last part of the repeat uh, in like the tutorial part of this round is we're going to do an increase into the next stitch right here. So just doing two single crochets into that next stitch to finish up that repeat like that. I think that, that'll be pretty cute. See, so it's, see how it's kind of like a little strawberry and I added the little green to the strawberry to make it look more like a strawberry? That's the goal there. Um, it might even be nice to come back with like a little bit of yellow to like give more detail, but maybe that's a little overkill. Okay, so that's the repeat. Single crochet one, bobble stitch, single crochet one, increase. All the way around. We're just gonna keep doing that repeat all the way around. Um, okay, well, before I get Back to that, let's drink some coffee because coffee makes the world turn. At least a little quicker than it would without it. Special thanks to Cooper in the chat for posting all the links to everything we're talking about um, throughout this. Um, he's just a super trooper Cooper, super duper de duper appreciated. Thank you, Cooper. You're the best. Okay. Well, let's get back to doing that repeat. I'm just gonna do one here and then grab my colors here. I'm just gonna let them like float on the inside, pull over and then go through. So that way I don't have to cut them every time I can just pull them through. Cause on the inside here, I don't really care if it's messy, you know? Okay, well let's do another one of those strawberries. Oops. Got to switch to green. Oh, there goes Jimbo being crazy again. I can hear him. <laughs> it's so funny hearing him <laughs> have a little fight with an invisible mouse or something. All right, go to the next one. There we go. So there's our second strawberry. That's pretty cute. I think that's pretty cute. I think that's pretty cute. Oh, I almost cut the yarn. We do not want to cut the yarn. Now the problem with cutting the yarn though, or with not cutting the yarn, is we're gonna end up with this tangled mess. See how it's just getting like really tangly here? So there's a few different ways we can do this. It might be even too tangled to even do this method. Yeah, it looks like it might just be a little too tingly. We might need to cut the yarn and come back to it. Normally I can just hold the yarn up and it'll un unwind itself. But it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case here. So 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one more strawberry and then we'll cut and let our yarn loose and come back to it after that. So let's do one more of this repeat with the strawberry. Just so that way it's three and then three that I cut off. You know, I don't do too many. These in between, through. Yeah, yeah. Roman, how you doing Roman? Guess who's back, back again. Roman's back. Tell a friend. Back to green. Back to red. I used to use this method all the time in my um, pod people to add like details to arms and stuff. I haven't made a pod person in a long time though. I'm excited. I have plans, a little bit of plans to get back to pod people eventually though. So hopefully I do that soon. And we'll do that with the last single crochet there. Now I'm going to cut the red and green here to just let them loose. And that way I can come back to it and it won't all be tangled back up. Okay. Now the question is, after this round, do we want to make it even bigger? Or do we want to do frosting here along the edge of where these strawberries are? I don't know. I don't know what would be best if we did like edging or, you know, we probably should do one more round of increasing after this actually. I think that would probably look better and give us more room to work with. But I guess we should probably finish this round first. I suppose. I suppose we should finish this round first. Yeah, I really want to do a tutorial about like, here's how to make your own pod person. Um, that was a huge goal of mine. That's been a huge goal of mine for a long time. That's why I've been considering doing one of these seasonal kits to be puppets so that I could do pod people. I could do um, like just random finger puppets. I could do uh, like full full on puppets or little hand puppets or yeah, I just think that'd be, a, it might be a really fun theme, but it might be a little early to do that. I probably need to uh, put a little bit more effort into how I'm gonna design those before I like pull that plug because that, that could be quite a lot. These strawberries look really cute on the edge, huh? I think that looks really cute. Okay. And I should probably make, maybe I can make a, a candle or something for this. Okay, just a couple more rounds of, or a couple more repeats left of this strawberry. By the way. Can, can I do a Sid the Sloth? Yes, I can do Sid the Sloth. Um, what does Sid say? He says, gosh, I used to watch that movie all the time. Oh, it's the last daffodil of the season. <laughs> when I was in um, elementary school, I uh, was in a puppet club. Wow, could you tell that I was in a puppet club in elementary school? Don't answer that. Anyhow, um... <laughs> I was like really cool. Anyhow, so I was in this puppet club and I got my first puppet. I don't remember their name, what I named them, but I do remember what their voice was like, which was like this. I would say, hello, everybody. How are you today? Oh, a candy lion. Must be the last one of the season. <laughs> okay, one more of these fancy pants strawberries, which is good. I, I, you know, I think six is just enough where I don't want to make any more. 
they're just a little frustrating. I mean, they're not that bad to make. They're, they're actually kind of fun to make for a little bit. But I think after six, I'm like, okay, I get it. I don't want to make any more of these strawberries, please. I've seen people do like handbags using this, uh, like bobble stitch strawberries. And I'm always like, what are you crazy? That seems like so much work. But I'm a lazy boy. I don't like to put in a lot of work. I, well, I actually, I do like putting in a lot of work, but I don't like putting into like a lot of work at one time for one project. I think that's my problem. Is I like to switch things up really often. Okay, so we're about to finish up this round. And I should have 30 stitches around. I ain't gonna count. I can trust myself. There we go. Let's get that red knot through the stitch. Pull the stitch marker up. And that should be the end of that round. I believe that was round five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Okay, now for round six, we're going to, uh, I think we're going to increase, in, increase it up one more time. So I'm going to make it just a little tiny bit bigger. So to do that, we're going to be doing four single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. Pretty relatively simple round. Another just round of increasing it up. And it should get a, us up to um, six, uh, 36 stitches around. Do I sleep? Uh, Lene asks, do I ever sleep? Or do you think about what you're going to crochet next? Um, I do sleep. I, I usually sleep like eight hours a day. But I sleep at a really weird time. So I'm a huge night owl, a uh, big time night owl. So I'm usually up to like 4 a.m. Uh, I really like to work uh, from like midnight to four. And, and then again from like noon to four and then like so i usually i like i like to split up my work day into like two different spots so that my like the end of my day is working i don't know why i think the reason i really like it is because no one's awake like not only no one's awake in this room but i'm on the pacific coast no one's awake in the world <laughs> like it is well that's not true but you know what i mean every it feels like the whole world is asleep when it's 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And there's something about knowing that, like, I'm awake when no one else is that makes me so productive. I'm like, no one can distract me. I can do anything. So, yeah, I, I really like doing work at that time. And uh, the big issue with that is what you might imagine. I, I still need to sleep, and I still sleep eight hours. So I wake up, like, at noon. But it works out really well. Um, I'm really productive because of that system. Hey. Oh, I know, I know. My mom loves you and all, but I don't think she wants your spit on her yarn, on her cake. Sorry, bud. Back to the cat cam for you. How how has your day gone? My day is going great. Um, like I said, because I woke up not that long ago, uh, it's going great. I got some really nice uh, time of cuddling with the cats this morning, and it was really really great. Me, I got we call them we call it double cats when we get both cats at the same time. So I had Jimbo. I was cuddling Jimbo like this. And then I had Phoebe between my legs. It was great. It was so great. Um, do I crochet as my job full time? I sure do. This is it. And it's all supported by you. So the only reason I can do... Hey, Jimbo. I know, buddy. We just see Jimbo, a flying Jimbo in the cat cam. You're about to see it again. Watch the cat cam. Here, we'll, we'll even switch it from and then he comes right back then he comes right back because he thinks it's a game it's not a game bud not a game no 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 that's not food no it's not I know it looks like food but it's not 
Sorry, bud. Um, yes, it is a, absolutely a dream job, and it is 100% uh, because of you. Seriously, like this, the only reason I could come out with how much content that I come out with is because people like you support. So thank you so much to anybody who purchases a kit, who buys a membership, who supports here on the live streams. Um, it's because of you that I can make all the content that I make and crochet every day. And I love it. It's the best job in the world. I am obsessed. So thank you very much. Super appreciated. Now, I will say my job is not 100% crocheting. I wish it was all crocheting. But Obviously, I have a lot of other parts of the job. There's uh, that's between like um, taking, like doing videos, editing videos, shooting pictures, editing PDFs, doing social media stuff, which is probably honestly one of my least favorite parts of doing it. Uh, and my favorite part is designing, obviously. That's why I got into this. Um, but there's also like a bunch of you know, admin stuff. I got to reply to emails when people ask for questions or need help and stuff. There's, there's a lot more work into it than just crocheting, unfortunately, but it is very fun. And I, uh, super duper appreciate that I get to do it. All right. Uh, oh, bye Celia. Thanks for joining. Um, okay. Michelle, you love the bottle of safety eyes. Oh, the bottle that the safety eyes came in, would I sell them separately? You actually probably bought one of the last of the bottles of eyes. I would consider selling them separately, um, but I have to do another order of them to get uh, more in the uh, inventory because I'm basically out now. Uh, so, yeah, I'd consider it. Um, Michelle, I could sell, I have like a few myself that I could sell to you, um, but. I don't know. It probably won't be soon that if I do that. So heads up there. Okay, so the next round, I think what we're going to do here. So I want to do a white trim along the edge, but I think it might be better to do that white trim later after we're done with uh, the main part of the cake because I just think it'll be easier to add and make more sense. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start the like I don't really know what to call it. The body of the cake. It's not really going to be the body. We're just going to go, we're going to make the height of the cake now. I think this is about good enough for the width. I just want it to be a little personal cake for her. Just a cute little, you know, birthday cake. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, single crochet into every stitch around, but we're going to do something a little tricky. We're not just going to single crochet. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet working into the back loops only of all the stitches around for this next round. It's not just going to be the back loops only though. If you can, you don't have to do it this way. It, it does make it a little bit cleaner of a, a right angle if you can do uh, the technique I'm about to show you. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that technique, instead just work into these back loops only, just these loops um, furthest away from you. So. You know, normally we've been working under both loops like that, but in this round, we only want to work into this back loop furthest away from you. Now, if you can, though, if you can work not only into this back loop, but also this loop right back here, boop, like that. If you could work under those two loops simultaneously, you'll get a much, much cleaner edge. Um, I'm actually going to take a picture of this. Hopefully that took. Oh, there we go. Nice. Um, what? What did I say? Oh, someone said a bad word. Well, I don't know what. I don't know what they said, but whatever. Um, so we're going to be doing a, a single crochet into every stitch around. And we're going to be working, trying to work into both of these loops simultaneously to get a really clean edge on the, uh, to, as we build like the body of our cake. Then after that, once we're done with our piece, we're going to start working into these front loops only with white yarn to create like an edge of it. But first we need to obviously do this back loop only. So 
This is going to be round, let's see, we did round one, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to be round seven. So for round seven, uh, working into the back loop and the loop on the back of your stitch, you want to do a single crochet into every single stitch around. Um, okay. So. Let's get our stitch marker up here too. Oh, you know what? Even before we do that though, I'm actually gonna start by slip stitching into the first stitch right here. We're gonna slip stitch into this first stitch and chain one like that. That's just gonna give us a little bit of height and a, even a cleaner edge for this because it's kind of a weird um, end here. And then our very first stitch we're gonna work into um, is going to be the same stitch that we just worked that slip stitch into. So the, the first one is gonna be the hardest one to work into. Basically take your crochet hook, find that first stitch that you slipped it, stitched into right here and go into that back loop only, which is gonna be right back here. You know what, let me zoom in actually because this part's gonna be a little bit trickier. So this was the stitch we just slip stitched into. We wanna work into this back loop here. And then we also, if we can, wanna get the tip of this crochet hook into Oops. into that loop as well. Like, yeah, like that. See how we're under both of those loops? And there it is from the top. This just makes it a little bit cleaner. It's Again, it's not like 100% necessary, but it does make it look a little bit cleaner and it's a fun little technique that you can use. So I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around. One, two, like that, under both of those loops. And see how it's making this nice clean edge as we go too? And we're gonna use that clean edge later on to add frosting. So it'll be like a really useful and helpful for us at a, at a later date too. Uh, we might actually do the frosting after this round, I don't know. Actually, yeah, maybe we will. Because then we can crochet around the white to like hide the end in too. So you can see how I'm gonna like bend it now and like pinch this so it makes even a nicer edge. But you can see how it really makes a very clean edge to your crochet. Okay. I have, I honestly, I'm super glad that I looked away because I don't know what the heck was said, but that's okay. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep crocheting around. There should be 36 stitches around by the way. Um, for the rest of this piece, I think the plan is going to be to keep it at 36 stitches around. So I don't think I'm going to be doing any increasing or probably not even any decreasing for uh, the rest of this uh, this cake. I think it's going to be at 36 stitches pretty much the whole way. I might do some decreasing at the end to close the cake, but I was actually thinking it might be best to put it on a plate. Um, or to keep it open, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Ah, back loop and back bar. Yeah, that's a great way to say what this, what the loop on the back of the stitch is, a bar. Yeah, that's good. So we're working into the back loop and the back bar simultaneously. Thanks, Michelle. That's That was super helpful. Thank you for the vocabulary. I always uh, have like I always struggle with um, certain, like explaining certain things when it comes to crochet. Even though I've been doing this for so long, there's just like certain, like there's anatomy of a crochet stitch that I, I don't know the names for things. <laughs> um, how would I make a farmer pod person? Oh, good question. Uh, I would probably make uh, essentially the Mario pattern. Um, because it would give you like overalls and then uh, maybe not do a mustache instead uh, 
instead of a mustache, I would add a hat to the top of it, like a farmer's hat. And I'd probably put, um, I'd probably change the colors, of course, with the Mario. I, I wouldn't make it red and blue. I might make it, like, yellow and blue. Um, add a yellow farmer's hat uh, to it that's added afterwards. And then I'd probably do, like, um, maybe a pipe cleaner, like a yellow pipe cleaner in the mouth. So that looks like a little piece of straw. And then give it a, uh, give them a, a like, a pitchfork or something and then maybe make a little chicken or something for them too i'd probably do something like that okay all right gotcha hey uh if you like this video by the way and you like what's happening here um, please consider liking this video down below and subscribing to the channel. It's a great way to support the channel. It's totally free and, uh, it helps this channel get recommended to more people. So it would be really cool if you could like this video and subscribe. Um, also, if you really like it again, please consider becoming a club crochet member. It is definitely the best way to support this channel. Uh, you can learn more by just going to clubcrochet.com but uh, you get access to the entire library of tutorials. You get early access to patterns. You get a discount in the shop. Um, we're working on a bunch of additional perks soon for the website so that members get even more stuff. Uh, and I'm actually going to be sending out a questionnaire to anybody that has a Club Crochet membership uh, probably early next week because I really need feedback on... Um, like the membership stuff because I just, I have ideas and I want to see which ideas to run with and which ones to ignore. Um, okay, so I'm on my last stitch right here, by the way. So this is going to be the last stitch in our ah, seventh round, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Like that. And uh, now for... Um, the next through few rounds of like the main part here, we're gonna do um, like just single crochets all the way down to make it like, to give it height and stuff. But before I even do that, um, I'm gonna call this round 7B. So Cooper in the, in the instructions, please call this round 7B. So we're gonna leave our, our um, brown loop open here and leave it there for just a second. Now I'm gonna add a frosting edge to all of those unused front loops only from round uh, six. So all these loops that we didn't use right here, um, we're gonna be using in this round to create a nice frosting edge to go around the outside. Now obviously you could use brown, you could use even black, that would could be kind of fun, but we're gonna be using white um, because I think it'd look a little bit cleaner. So let's go ahead and grab our white yarn here. Um, I don't think we're gonna need very much. We'll need this again later on because we're gonna do a second round of this frosting on the bottom of it of the piece too. Basically, here's the idea. We're gonna take, um, first off, fold this stitch marker over like that. We're gonna pull a loop through the un first unused front loop only. So right here, we're gonna get our crochet hook into that front loop just like that. And we're just gonna make a loop on our crochet hook and pull it straight straight through that stitch. You don't need to make a slip knot or anything like that. I think just a loop will be fine. And then after you pull that loop through, we're gonna yarn over and chain one, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna try doing, um, I think I'll just do a chain and then a slip stitch into the next and then a chain and a slip stitch in the next to make just like a little bit of a frill um, as we go around with the frosting. So. We're gonna call that our chain, and then we're gonna go into the next stitch right here and do a slip stitch into the next stitch. Whoops. Like that. Okay. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around to get to the beginning of the round again. So yarn over, chain one, go into the next stitch right here. Remember, we're using those unused front loops only from round six and we're just doing a slip stitch like that. And see, it's just gonna create this little like edge as we go around. And the reason I'm doing this now instead of later is because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for us to hide the tail ends of this um, 
white yarn now uh, rather than doing it like after the piece is already sewn closed or whatever. See, so it's just going to create this nice little cute frilly edge along the outside just to give the cake a little bit of, I don't know, something. Um, Zoe, this is the full tutorial on this. Um, I'm going to call this the full video tutorial for this pattern. And then I'm going to put this on the website as a, a written with the written instructions uh, after this live stream. So if you want to get any extra help uh, or, you know, if you want any additional information for this pattern, um, please ask now while we're recording it. I'm actually also going to take a picture of this so I can get a good picture for the for the PDF. Boom. Uh, by the way, that's actually how I do it. Uh, I don't know if you can see me doing that. Can you see? I take I take pictures by using my nose a lot of times in my patterns, which is just this funny little thing that I do. Just because usually I need both my hands free, so and I can just touch the screen on my computer to take a picture. So I just go with my nose and I'll just go like, like that. Just tap it with my nose and it takes a picture. So it looks really funny. Sometimes you, if you see a picture, any pictures of things where it's both of my hands are in the picture, I guarantee you that's how I took the picture. Is I was holding it out like this with my butt out and then taking a picture of my nose. <laughs> See, so that's pretty good. Make this nice little edge for our cake. Again, this is round, we're going to call, we're calling this round 7B. because I think it's a little bit easier to explain that way. And just a little bit further. I wish I took a picture when I was doing those strawberries too, but maybe I can pull the picture from the, the video itself. I might be able to do that. I don't know though. Okay, and as I do this around, by the way, there should be um, 36 uh, slip stitches. I think that's exactly what it'll be. Or, right, 36 slip stitches, there'll also be 36 chains. So there'll be like 36 of these frills, basically, all the way around. But it doesn't like terribly matter how many because you're not going to be working into these stitches anyhow. They're just like decoration. Okay. We're almost done here. Why do I yarn over uh, for my crochet and not, and not under? Um, okay, so that's a good question. So a lot of people will do, they call it an X single crochet. Um, it's basically instead of yarning over your crochet hook like this, like I'm doing, people will yarn under the crochet hook and pull under it. Personally, uh, I do think it makes a pretty clean single crochet looking stitch, but it does make a lot of other stitches way more difficult. So like bobble stitches with yarn unders are like really tough. It also makes your stitches really dense and hard to reach. Um, so I usually kind of just don't like to deal with them. Um, okay, wait, so uh, before, I, I'll talk more about that in a second though too. Um, for this next part, by the way, uh, just a heads up, this looks like it could be a really cute pie. So just throwing that out there, don't forget the, the cutie pie crochet challenge is on now. And look, I did the same frill thing on the outside of the pies too. Um, but the cutie pie challenge is out now. So if you want to crochet a pie and post a picture of it, um, you'll be entered to win a free crochet kit. So just consider it. You can learn more by going to clubcrochet.com challenge. 
Okay, for the end of this round, by the way, we're gonna pull this stitch marker up and around like that. And then I think what we'll do for the last part here, we could just cut and hide the end in. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just cut the yarn like that, pull it through. And then I'm just gonna hide the end in. Um, and the best way I think to do that is going to be by threading it onto our needle. And we're gonna go through the back of the first chain. So we're gonna go take our crochet hook or our yarn on our needle here and go into the back of this stitch right here, like that. You know what, let's get a picture of this as we go. Perfect. That was great. Okay, we're gonna pull it through like that. And then we're gonna go back through the center of where the stitch is right here. And then we're just gonna hide that end onto the inside of our piece. Like so, just pull it nice and tight. So the idea here is we're trying to like simulate the end of uh, the same end. So it's kind of hard to see. It's a little easy to see though, I'm not gonna lie, but eh, it's okay. All right, we're also gonna take this other white tail end from the very beginning, and I'm gonna pull this with our needle through the stitch also. And we're gonna work around both the white tail ends in the next round as we go to just kind of hide them on the inside and keep everything stitched together and sewn together really, really well. Um, okay, so that's gonna be the end of round 7B. Um, for the next round, we're gonna be on round eight uh, and for rounds eight through, I don't really know exactly, let's see. Rounds eight through, I think we're gonna make it about this tall. So that'll be probably one, two, three, four, five, maybe around six rounds. Um, I might change that to seven or eight. This is gonna just be adding the height to your strawberry. So around six rounds, um, uh, of just single crochet stitches all the way around over and over and over again. So we're just gonna pull this stitch marker up and get this round started. So this is gonna be a long series of just single crochets into every stitch around. Now the first single crochet is kind of hard to see, I think. I believe it's actually right here. Like that is our first one. So it's kind of weird. It kind of got like stuck under, I think. Let's see, is that really the first one? Boom, boom. Yeah, I think that is the first stitch. So yeah, it's right there. Okay, so let's get that first one started and then I gotta fix the music. The music stopped. I think we're I think we finished our um, playlist. So we'll switch over to probably lo fi. Uh, hold on, Jimbo. This first stitch is being weird. Okay, is that really the first stitch though? Okay, so now is where we're gonna count our stitches. Let's make sure. First off, let's fix the music. Yeah. And we're gonna shuffle lo-fi music. That's nice. I don't even know if you can hear it though. Can you hear the music at all? Let me know in the chat. Um, and then also before we get going and count our stitches, Tig, I did not open the gift. Did I open the goblin's present? I didn't, let's do it on screen. Uh, I don't wanna ruin the tie, so I'm gonna just fold it over so I can re-close it later. So this was a gift from Tig for my birthday. Oh my gosh, there's something in here. What is it? Is it a heart? Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh, this looks like it took you a long time. Oh my gosh, Ty, I love that. Thank you so much. I I was, you know what I, I was thinking too? I wonder if they added anything into that gift or not. And I didn't even look. I can't believe I didn't look. Oh, I love that. We're gonna put that right here next to the, next to your gift. Thank you so much. I love it. Okay, let's see if we can get this back onto our piece without so we can keep this 
I don't think we're going to be able to, huh? Oh, well. We'll put the present back over here. I'll fix it later. Thank you, Tyg. I love it. Okay, let's count our stitches. That is so cool. That's so cute. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four. I'm counting backwards. Five, six, seven, eight. We're supposed to have, I think, 36. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Kind of a mess on the inside though, huh? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 2, 3, 24, 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so this is actually the first one. So I was wrong. We were about to work into a chain stitch, which would have been not right. I'm glad we counted our stitches, though. Okay, so let's try this again now. We're going to go into this stitch here and then do a single crochet. There we go. Oh, one more thing actually before I finish that single crochet. Let's do that again. Single crochet, but working around the tail ends of both of our white stitches. That's our goal there. Just to keep it locked into place. That's just a, that's just a little something to make sure everything is hidden on the inside and we don't have to stress about it later. One, two, I'll just do like three single crochets around that white yarn. And we'll clean up the inside here. Let's go ahead and we'll cut this white yarn nice and short. Throw this to the side for stuffing. And we're just going to keep crocheting along. So this is just going to be a uh, few rounds. I don't know, six to eight. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly how many just yet, but I'll know soon of just single crochets around. We're just building the height to our cake now. Yeah, this is a very good technique for making pie crust, uh, Morgana, and just like any other ridges. So I also use it for, I actually use it for the edges of the heads of my burbs too. So you can see right here, I use the same technique for the for the edge of the burbs to give it like kind of a frill. Pretty useful technique. Um, you can use it for like skirts too. Just stuff like that. Maybe even a tutu on a really small crocheted thing. You might want to do like bigger stitches than just slip stitches though. You can't really hear the music, but you don't really mind much. Okay, let's, you know what? Let's do a quick poll. How do we feel about the music? Uh, I'm curious. Music question. Um, louder lo-fi music. No music. Um, new music or um, keep it as is. Okay, so let me know what you guys think about sound, uh, just sound preferences there. How do you feel about music on the live stream? Do you want it? Do you like it when it's quiet? How do you feel about the audio for the stream? Let me know. There's a poll in the chat now. So you can see how this is going to make the cake like taller and taller and taller. We're also going to do one of these frills at the very bottom of the cake too. So just for reference there. And I think we should probably try to make a, at least one candle for the top of the cake too. I don't think my mom would like very much me telling us, telling how old she is uh, turning. So I'm going to tell you how old I think she's turning, which is 45 years old. My mom is probably 45 years old. <laughs> Young mom. <laughs> All right, let's keep crocheting here. Yes, she was, she was, 
that would make her like 12 when she had me. <laughs> yes, that's accurate. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna cut this brown yarn because it's just getting in my way a little bit. Um, so there's our first round of single crochets, by the way. Looks pretty good so far. I, I like it. We'll probably add a face to it too. Ooh, could I put a frill in the middle so it's more layered? Oh, that's an interesting idea, Sunshine. That is an interesting idea. Um, how would I make a girl farmer person? Okay, so I would, if I was making a girl farmer person, pretty much everything I said about the original pod person farmer person is the same, except for I'd add pigtails. That's really all I think I would do to make it look more like feminine um yeah i think that's all i do is just add pigtails i think keeping the nose i mean you can also maybe like get rid of the nose um but you know <laughs> women have noses too i don't know if you've ever noticed that but it's true uh <laughs> um but yeah i think pigtails would probably do the trick oh hello my mom is watching right now <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Oh, about the age? Yes. Yes, that is how old my mom is. <laughs> hey, mom, uh, uh, they had an idea of doing a second layer to your cake here. Um, would you want it to be a one layer, like we're doing it right now? Or do you think we should add in another layer of frosting in between? Maybe around like this stitch right here to add like this again right here. What, how, what is your opinion on that, mom? And uh, thanks for joining the chat, mom. I, I was, part of me was like, oh, I hope she doesn't see this so I can surprise her with it. But then the other part of me was like, she's gonna see it. <laughs> she's gonna see it. She gets the emails, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, mom. Happy almost birthday, mom. It's also just totally coincidentally my aunt's birthday, too, at the same time. My mom's sister's birthday. What? How? I'll tell you how. You know how. They're twins. Uh, cute idea for the second layer. Okay, so we like the idea of a second layer. All right, we can do a second layer. Let's see. So do we want the second layer here or one higher? I think we want the cake about that tall in total. So we'd want the second layer to be exactly about halfway through, right? And I think this is, because we don't want like a crazy tall cake. So I think we want to do the second layer right now. So good timing. All right, so for our second layer, um, here's what I would do for a second layer. So if you want to make your cake bigger, by the way, you just keep repeating this single crochet over and over and over. If you want to do a second layer like we're about to, um, all you need to do is do one of those rounds of single crochets working into the back loops only, which is what we're about to do. So this next round of single crochets, I'm just going to work into the back loops only. Now, technically, we are on round six. Uh, that was seven, eight, nine. So technically, we're on round 10. So I'm going to call this round 10, uh, maybe 10A. We're just going to work into the back loop only and do a single crochet into each stitch around. Basically, we're leaving that front loop only open for another frill. So we're gonna do another round of frills after this. Um, so for this full round, we're just gonna single crochet into that back loop only, just like this. See, so we're only working those back loops and it's leaving these front loops open here for us to work with in our next round. Okay, hope that helps. Let me know, by the way, if you have any questions as we uh, get going. Um, oh, don't forget to do a poll for the strawberry. Thank you for reminding me again. Um, we will do that in in uh, in a moment. Let's let's go ahead and finish the main part of our cake first, and then we'll do that uh, that poll. Um, yeah. What was I saying? I don't remember. 
You don't really need to add this uh, extra layer, by the way, if you don't want to. You obviously can just do single crochets around, but we have a request. So what are you gonna do? Not give the birthday girl what she wants? Come on, come on. More layers equals more frosting equals better. Agreed, Zoe, agreed. What's your favorite cake, guys? My favorite cake is probably Funfetti. I actually really, really like Funfetti cake. Um, it tastes good. It's fun. It's got fun in the name. Can't go wrong. It's cute. I feel like you only ever get it on a birthday. I like Funfetti cake. There, I said it. How many rounds of single crochet did I do? So, I did... Uh, so... Here's how I would write it down, Cooper. Um, round, so round seven was right there. I, so I would say round eight and nine. So two rounds of just single crochets into each stitch around. And then round 10, working into the back loops only, single crochet into each stitch around. That's how I'd say it right now. Um, now round, we're going to call this round 10 B, uh, we're gonna be doing what we did for this top part. We're gonna do another round of frills, working into these unused front loops only um, from our previous round. So, we actually, I think I need more white yarn. I don't think I have enough. So let me grab, uh, is it time for a whole new ball of white yarn though? I think it might be. Let me grab a new ball of white yarn, which is uh, a treat. A treat? How fun. So we're gonna grab our white yarn here. Oh. Thank you, Jimbo. Jimbo be out with that. <laughs> that was cute. All right. And we're gonna do basically exactly what we did in this top round for this round 10B. We're gonna go into that first unused front loop only from round nine. That's gonna be right there. Create a little loop with your white yarn yarn over with your crochet hook and pull it under that stitch like that. And then we're gonna yarn over and chain one with that yarn. And then I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing that I did in this round. So I'm gonna do chain one, which we just did, and then slip stitch one into the next stitch like that. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around. So chain one, and then slip stitch one into that unused front loop only. Uh, and we'll just keep doing that all the way chain one slip stitch one chain slip stitch and then at the end of this round we're going to do that same hidden end method that we did before uh, and crochet around the tail ends of this white yarn to help lock all of this yarn in place and just like hide it you can see how it's making this second layer of cake. Your grandma's homemade white cake and chocolate cake mixed together. It doesn't even need frosting. It's so moist. That is Lene's favorite cake. I like that. That's cute. I love that. Zoe's favorite cake is also Funfetti. Um, and also a big fat chocolate mud cake. Uh, I could totally have guessed that your favorite cake was also Funfetti, Zoe. You seem like a Funfetti kind of person. A curved needle is pretty much simply for ease of use. Yes, that is absolutely true. Um, oop. Yeah, it definitely. So what I've found with kids uh, being able to crochet, um, we were they're talking about kids in the chat and how old. Uh, I think they're talking about how old to be able to crochet. I'm not really sure. 
Um, but uh, what I have found with teaching kids to crochet, um, what it depends on is less the kid's age and more the kid's ability for patience. So, uh, like, there, I have taught kids that are, like, really young that I never thought would actually be able to crochet, like, four years old, able to crochet, because they are just super-duper patient four-year-olds, because usually a four-year-old isn't that patient. But I think on average, we're looking around, probably around eight, usually is, like, the around the age where kids are patient enough to learn to crochet um, but yeah when it comes down to it uh, learning how to crochet is all about patience um, and uh, there's obviously there's a level of dexterity to it but for kids the dexterity is probably you can probably be able to crochet like your hands will be able to crochet somewhat well it's just sitting down for a long period of time and learning a new thing uh, can be more difficult for kids i've noticed so i i f i noticed that this yarn had like some weird threads in it so i'm kind of just hiding those on the inside right now if you're wondering what i was doing there okay almost done with this round of just single crochets by the way how did that pole go Keep it as is. Okay, I love it. Let's do that then. We'll keep the music as is. Best cake that Ivy has ever had in the chat. They say uh, a cake from a Russian bakery in Seattle that your aunt bought. It was a Nutella cake with crushed hazelnuts in the frosting layer of meringue in between the cake layers. Ooh, -hoo! that does sound really good. That sounds really good. One of the best cakes I've ever had is a princess cake. I think that's what they're called. We had it for my friend Maddie's birthday once and I was like, oh my God, this cake is so good. So good. I think I just heard Jimbo sneeze in the other room. Okay, so that's gonna be the last of our slip stitches and chains. I'm gonna go ahead and do what we did in our round above here. We're gonna cut the yarn kind of short, maybe about like that long. Pull it through. And we're gonna do the exact same hidden end method that we did before to hide that end in. Uh, and then we'll keep crocheting around in our uh, brown yarn to continue on the height of our crochet but you can see how we're getting pretty close to the end here for our crochet um, we don't have a whole lot of room for a face so I don't know if my mom wanted me to add a cute little face to this or not we should probably ask her hey mom are you in the chat still if you're in the chat let me know do you want me to add a face to your cake or do you want it to be all natural so I'm gonna go into this first chain that we made right here into the back loop only of that chain with our yarn like that and then back into where this end is coming out of and then on the inside like that and then we're also going to take this tail end here and we're going to pull that on the inside too and then we're going to work around both these white tail ends for the first few stitches of our next round uh, to make sure that they're locked into place I believe this next round is gonna be round 11. Let's count our brown rounds though. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, we're on round 11 now because we called these fr uh, frill rounds, rounds uh, like we called them B rounds. So we're on round 11, pull our stitch marker up here and uh, just keep crocheting around at least two rounds now of just single crochets around. No word yet from mom about if she wants us to add a face or not. So we'll we'll just wait patiently. Looks pretty good so far though. I'm I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. Not gonna lie. 
Now the real question is, do we want to add this onto a plate? Or do we want to just like do a do a closed end or something? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how we should finish this cake up. I think we should probably just do a closed end instead of doing it on a plate so that my mom could put it on a plate if she wants to for decoration or something. I could see her really wanting to do that. Oh, thank you. Stylin' Leather is looking out for the for the video. Stylin' Leather just said, "Hey everyone, don't forget to hit the like button." <laughs> Thanks, Stylin' Leather. You're great. Hopefully up. <laughs> yeah. Dude, th super big thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Lene, do we start on a simple project? I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about for your kid. Yeah, I definitely would start on a very, very simple project. In fact, I'd start on just like making chains, uh, like just, just making like friendship bracelets by using chain stitches. I actually have a video somewhere on my channel for that. Um, if you want just like a quick little tutorial to use, you don't really need one though. I'm sure you know how to do chain stitches. Look at that. That looks pretty great. Let's get a little more coffee in us. All right, that was round 11. Continue on to round 12. I'm going to go ahead and hide that little, see this little thread? It's bugging me. This stuff is bugging me. So we're going to trim it nice and close and just try to ignore it. There we go. Yeah, and then maybe when, uh, after they've like gotten comfortable with, oopsies, I totally forgot around to work around these tail ends as we went. So I'm gonna work around the tail ends on this next round instead, just because I totally forgot to. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you work around them, just make sure to work around them for a few stitches eventually, just so that they don't like come undone on the inside. Okay, so we're doing another round here. Uh, this is gonna be round 12, all just single crochets all the way around. And then we'll just keep crocheting around. I actually think this might be the last round of like our normal size cake, unless we wanna do one more round just to give it a little bit of extra height, but I think it's a pretty good size for a cake. Ooh, we do want a plate. Other people want a plate. Okay, what if we do a sewn closed bottom on this cake and then we do a, a, a secondary plate for the cake? I think that'd be probably a good idea. I know exactly how I'd do a plate. Plate would be easy, especially even doing a frilly, like lacy end to the plate would be super easy. I, I can do that. Okay, just about done with this round. 11, 12, so this is round 12 again, just for a reminder. Okay. And that'll be the last stitch. You still should have 36 stitches around if you are making your cake the same size as I have. I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see, do we want to really add one more layer or not? The problem with adding one more layer is it will make the two layers of the cake, not like a whole layer. I'm just saying, do we want to add one more round of single crochets? Now the problem with that is going to be that the top layer is slightly more thin than the bottom layer, but I don't know. I feel like adding one more layer to this might look more cake-like. Not really sure though. 
Well, here, one thing I definitely want to do is get rid of these stitch markers. It'll give us a better idea. So we'll go ahead and remove these stitch markers here. Just from the top. Of course, we still need to make a candle probably. Okay. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty great. I don't even know if we need another layer or not. Hmm. Can't decide. Eh, let's do one more layer. Let's do one more layer. Give it just a slight amount more height. I have decided we're doing one more layer. Okay, we're not doing a whole layer. We're just doing one more round of single crochet. So this is gonna be round 13. Just one last round of all single crochets around in our brown yarn. Now I have a few different ideas on how we can close it up. The first idea I had was to create basically the same top and then sew it onto the bottom to close it. But that's gonna be like a whole thing, you know? Like that's, that's just gonna be like a whole process of sewing and crocheting and all this other fun stuff that I just don't want to deal with. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to decrease it down after this round and just close it up with decreases and then we'll just stuff it to sew it closed. Um, and because my mom has not mentioned in the chat uh, about doing a face or not, I guess we're going to do faceless. I guess we'll keep it without a face. I don't know. Ooh, style and leather. I want to see that. Style and leather said that they put some of the um of their micro crochet. Oopsies. There we go. Chormbly? Was that was the name? Ch Cor Cor I already forgot your name. I'm so sorry, buddy. See, I should have writ wrote it down on a piece of paper. Pinned it to you. Chor Bumbly? Who can remember our goblin's name? From the beginning of the stream. Sure to the face. Okay, my mom said sure. My mom said sure. All right, we're going to add a cute face then on it. We'll do a pretty low face too. We're not going to do it on the top. So we'll just add a face into like right around here. So that you only see it when you're looking at it from the front like that. Okay, so uh, I think we should do, what do you think, eight millimeters? Let's do eight millimeter eyes. That is a six millimeter eye in the eight millimeter eye bucket. So we're gonna take those out. And that's a 10 millimeter eye in the eight millimeter eye bucket. Looks like we just got a mix of eyes in here. I'm gonna have to empty all these and redo it. Okay. That one 10 too. Yep, that one's 10 too. 10 too. Here's an 8 millimeter eye. 1 8. And I think that's another 8. Is that 10? Nope, that's 10. Good thing I can tell the difference. There's our second 8. Okay, we'll throw these ones to the side. I'll clean this out later. Oops, we need a back of the eye too. Yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing that uh, sunshine. We're gonna be working into the back loops only for the next round. Um, also because we're gonna be adding another round of these frills. But before we even do that, let's, let's add our face. So I'm just gonna add my face onto the front of our cake on the opposite side of where this the, t the end is. So right around here somewhere. Um, maybe so that the these two strawberries are like evenly placed so that they're kind of like in line with the strawberries. So like maybe one stitch here, one eye here and one eye. Um, let's see, if we did a smile, we'd go one, two, two. And next eye right here, maybe. Uh, that might be a little close for the eyes. Let's do a little out more like that, maybe. Actually, maybe even one more out, like right here. That's good. 
and then we'll, we'll of course we'll add little cute cheeks and stuff like that but i think that's pretty good it's a little low for the face but i think it'll be funny you know yeah it'll be it'll be a cute spot for the face so that like they're watching the party happen so we need uh just some black thread i'm actually running out of black thread so let's use black yarn split in half make it a little easier for us so grab the black yarn we'll just need a little bit of this black yarn to make our own thread and then i'm just going to pull it apart see it splits into four different sections which each have their own split because this is the our club crochet amigurumi yarn which has like multiplied threads but we only need one of these so we'll grab that one there we go i think that should be enough for a face so we'll thread this on a needle um, if we want to use double thread, we can too. If we want it to be a little bit thicker. All right. So the face we're going to go here. We're just going to do a simple smile for this cake just to make it easy. One, two. That. We'll make actually a really cute tiny smile. So right there. I'm going to come up through the middle right here. Um, I'm working on a tutorial, by the way, soon for a bunch of different ways to make faces for your army Gurumi. So just heads up, that is in the works. Okay, like that. But there's a really cute, easy smile. Super cute, super tiny. Very adorable. And double knot this. One. And two. How's that look? Perfect. That looks perfect even. Okay. Got that. Next, we want to uh, lock these eyes into place. Nice and easy. Boop -ba boo Look good. Looks good to me. And then last, uh, I'm gonna add a little red cheeks to give it a little bit more detail. And to make it work with the strawberries on the top. Red's also one of my mom's favorite colors. I think it's it I'm pretty sure it is her favorite color, but I don't wanna I don't wanna be a goof and say, you it's red. I'm like I'm like mm. I'm like 89% sure that red is her favorite color. We're gonna go right here. So I'm just adding little cute cheeks on the sides of the face, on the sides of the eyes, like that. Just to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, more kawaii, cute look. Like that. And just double knot it. We don't need to double knot it very tight on the inside. That's probably fine. Yeah, great. And then another one over here. Like that. You know, if you don't have enough brown left over from the eclair to make a chocolate cake for the from the kit, I mean, uh, Jill, you might um, be able to do like a vanilla cake using all the white, or you could use um, any of the other colors. You can do a pink cake too. That'd be really cute, actually. So there you go. I like it. Very cute, very simple face. All right, let's continue on in our crochet. We're on round, do, 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 I don't remember, um, but we're gonna start closing it up here. So I'll pull the stitch marker up here. Uh, let's start by counting our brown stitches because those are the rounds that we're counting. Uh, also, Jill, I did see your question about the hoodies. Um, uh, Jill wants to know 
why I haven't got the hoodies into the shop yet. And it's because I'm lazy and I forgot. So I'm going to write this down so I don't forget. Um, I've got a pretty big to-do list for today. So let me add that to the list though. Hoodies. I also have new um, stickers that I've been wanting to add to the shop for a long time that I've been really lazy about. So I need to get those in the shop too. Um, round 14. Okay, thank you, Cooper. I'm just going to count just to be sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure you're right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That was seven and eight and nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. You are correct, sir. Round 14. So for round 14, we're going to be working to the back loops only, and we're going to start decreasing it down to start to close our cake up. So for round 14, it's going to be two, three, four single crochets and then a decrease, not a invisible decrease, not a single crochet two together, but a sharp decrease. This is a decrease. This is the first way that I use to decrease and it makes a really, really closed end, which is exactly what we want on this because we don't want any kind of like oomph to it. We really want it to close in. Now this is the probably the least attractive way to do a decrease, but it does the job really well. And because it's going to be on the bottom of our crochet, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're working into the back loops only. We're going to do one, two, three, four single crochets, and then one sharp decrease. And I'll show you how to do that sharp decrease when we get there. So let's get it started. We're going to do one, two, three, and four. And then our sharp decrease. For a sharp decrease, I'll zoom in just for it to make it a little bit easier for you. For a sharp decrease, we're going to go into the next stitch. Again, we're only working the back loops only. We're going to pull a loop through. Then we're going to go into the next next stitch right here, pull a second loop through and then pull that second loop through the two loops on the hook like this one and two like that. It's kind of like a slip stitch two together. And then we'll just repeat that process of four single crochets, one sharp decrease all the way around. So four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then a sharp decrease. Next loop, pull a loop through. Next loop after that right here, pull a second loop through and pull that second loop through the two on the hook like that. And see how it's like really gonna close it in? It's gonna make it really closed in really fast. So that is the goal here. All right, I can zoom back out now. This is gonna be a fun impromptu pattern. now. I will say this pattern is not going to be meant for the um, seasonal crochet kit. And what I mean by that is like the seasonal crochet kit makes a certain amount of patterns. And then there's a bunch of alternative patterns that you also can do with your seasonal crochet kit. And I think this is going to be one of those alternative patterns. The only reason I say that is because I don't, I want to make sure that you have enough yarn left over to make all the patterns that the kit is actually designed for. Um, so just in case, you know, it's why I call it the alternative patterns rather than like this pattern is meant for the crochet kit. Uh, I do think this would be a really fun pattern to make with your crochet kit. And it, you probably have enough materials to make it on top of everything else. But uh, just to be safe, I think I'll, I'll label this as an alternative pattern instead. There's a lot of alternative patterns for this kit though. Like I think this kit has the most alternative patterns so far. I think there's over like 40 different patterns outside of the initial crochet patterns that you can also make on top of it. So kind of cool. Okay. So after this, at the end of this round, which we just finished up, you should have 30 stitches around. So there should be 30 stitches around now if you'd like to count your stitches. Okay. Now, before I start round, 15, we're going to do round 14 B, which is going to be adding one more layer of frill uh, along the edge here for the bottom of our cake. So just another layer of this frill. We're going to do it the same way that we've been doing it for the last two things, which is going to be grabbing our white yarn, making a loop, pulling that loop through the unused front loop only 
from round 13, which is going to be right here. I'm pulling that loop through that stitch and then making a chain like that. And then we're just going to do a chain one, which we just did, and then slip stitch one into the next stitch like that. And we're just going to do that all the way around. So chain one, like that, and slip stitch. And we'll just keep repeating that all the way around. Yeah, I need to get way better at stickers. Um, it, it is a big goal of mine next year to do stickers. I want to do a sheet of stickers from all the seasonal crochet kit uh, designs. So, you know, like the little like octopus in a, in, in the, like all those pin designs that I did like this. This is one of our pin designs. I think it'd be really nice to do that as a sticker too. So I just think it'd be a fun thing to do. Um, yes, we're going to vote for the punk strawberry after I finish the cake. Um, just because I'm going to do a plate while we're voting for that. So after we're done with this cake, we'll, I'll start crocheting or we'll put the, We'll choose the names for the punk rock strawberry, and then I'll start crocheting the plate. Uh, and as I'm crocheting the plate, we'll vote for the name of our strawberry. That's the goal there, Jill. Thanks for asking though. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Tig. I love the look of micro crochet. I think it's the coolest look ever, but it is so difficult. I can't do it like all the time. It, it actually like sometimes gives me a headache, but it does look really, really cool. Okay, just a few more stitches here. And there still should be 36 stitches around as you do your um, frills here. I mean, technically there's like, there's 36 chains and 36 slip stitches, but I'm just gonna call it 36 in general. Looks pretty good though. Of course, we still need to figure out how we're gonna do a candle. I've got a few ideas though. Um, I think a pipe cleaner is gonna be the easiest idea. Like doing a, you know how like sometimes I'll, um, I'll do a wrapped, a yarn wrapped pipe cleaner. I think that's what we're gonna try doing. You know, I gotta say, for an impromptu pattern, I'm pretty proud of this so far. This is pretty cool. I had the idea, like last night, I was like, okay, I, will, I definitely wanna do a chocolate cake uh, for my mom for her birthday, but like, I don't have a pattern for a chocolate cake. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's just think this through. That way, like, I have an idea for the live stream and I'm pretty sure this will work. And it totally worked. Proud of myself. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna be all the stitches around for our layer of frosting on the outside there. And you can see how we're closing it in. And this frosting is gonna be really nice because it's gonna help it really stay sitting straight up too. Okay, we're gonna cut the yarn and do another hidden end just to like really hide that end in there. So we'll pull it all the way through. And just like we did for the other frills here, thread it onto our needle go into the back of this first chain that we made right here like that and then in through where this end is coming out like that and then back down on the inside of your piece and we're going to work around this white tail end and we're going to work around this white tail end that we're about to pull through also so like this ah There we go. No, a little bit more. Nice. Pull that through. Okay, now we're gonna work around these two tail ends as we work our uh, next round of stitches. Um, I believe around 14 was the decreasing, right? So round 14B was the frill. So now we're on round 15. 
For round 15, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated six times around. That's gonna bring your stitch count down from 30 stitches, which is what your current stitch count is, down to 24 stitches around. So you should have 24 stitches by the end of round uh, uh, 15 here. Whew, I hope I said all that right. It felt like I said that right. So there's one, two, and we're just gonna do three around this white yarn just to keep it locked into place. And we'll just stuff that back onto in the inside of your piece. And then we're going to do a sharp decrease. Pull a loop through, pull a loop through the next, pull through two. And then we'll just repeat that all the way around. Hey Carl, how you doing? One, three and then a sharp decrease jill said that you made 14 of the mini hearts for valentine's day and made them into keychains and gave them out to your co-workers and they all love them oh thank you so much you couldn't make it in 12 minutes okay so i had an idea the other day um i was being a super nerd and I was watching a speed run of uh, Super Mario 64 because I don't know why. It came up on my YouTube algorithm and I was like, sure, why not? We'll watch a speed run right now. And I thought, oh my gosh, what if I had like speed running records for my crochet patterns? That would be so funny, like a speed running crochet record. And then like, if you want to enter to like, get a speed running record you have to like record yourself with like a like a um like a clock in the background on time lapse or something so like you could prove your speed running <laughs> i don't know i just I, I was thinking about the other day i was like that would be kind of fun It'd be silly maybe that's like a like a um what's it called like a an april fools kind of like you know like a reddit and stuff will do like an april fool's joke but it's not really a joke it's just like a new thing they've added to their website that's just kind of cool and they use like april fool's day as the as the like reason to do it that might be a kind of fun thing to do for april fools that would be actually really funny i'm i'm going to strongly consider that <laughs> That looks really good. This looks really good. <laughs> I'm so proud of this. It's so cute. I might have to make another one of these. So I can have keep one for myself. Okay, so that's the end of that round, by the way. Um, I am on round 16 now, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm on round 16. And for round 16, I'm going to be doing two single crochets and then an invisible decrease uh, repeated six times around. That's going to bring us down from 24 to 18 stitches around. See you later, Tig. Thank you so much for the gift. Really super duper appreciated. Uh, totally made my week. Like seriously, that was really, really cool. Uh, and thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Next week, by the way, uh, if you want to join, uh, next week is going to be, let me look on my, on my calendar, uh, which you can actually find the calendar on the homepage of the website, by the way. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, it should show the calendar of uh, live streams coming up. Um, the next live stream is going to be next Friday, same time, same place. Uh, I have it listed as a... Uh, a free for all. So I don't know what I'm going to be crocheting next week. Um, I think it might be a fun day just, just to like, I don't know, do something weird. Do something weird. Um, okay, so for this round, again, we're doing two single crochets. One, two. And then a sharp decrease like that. One and two with a sharp decrease. Two, sharp. 
We're almost done though, at least with the cake part. Then we're gonna do a candle, and then we're gonna do a um, a plate as you guys vote for the giant strawberry. Two, and another decrease. There we go, and that should be 18. Nice and easy there. Now before I do the next round, I'm gonna stuff it a little bit. We don't need to like over stuff on this pattern, um, obviously, but let's throw our extra thread in there to start. Grab some of this stuffing, put that in. But yeah, at this point of the pattern, it's just a little easier to get some stuffing in there. You don't need to overstuff it though yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that much stuffing in for right now and uh, we'll stuff it up a little bit more after this round. So in the pattern, I would say this would say uh, stuff slightly or stuff somewhat. Then the next round will be say stuff mostly and then stuff fully after that. So this next round, by the way, we're doing one single crochet, one invisible or one decrease repeated six times around. So one single crochet, one sharp decrease, one and two for a sharp decrease. All the way around to bring us down from 18 stitches to 12 stitches around. So by the end of this round, you should have just 12 stitches around. Hey, everybody that's in the chat, uh, thank you so much for joining these live stream crochet alongs. Super duper appreciated. Um, I think it's really fun. And I just love how kind and, and awesome the chat is. Uh, we really do feel like we've got a really cool community here and it just, it means a lot. So thank you so much for joining. Okay, this is gonna be the last stitch there to have 12 stitches around. We just have one more round left for the main part of this cake. Before we do that though, let's stuff it mostly. We'll add a little bit more stuff in here. We'll have one more opportunity to stuff this up after this round, after this next round, but we wanna stuff it mostly right now. So I'm making sure that all the stuffing is in all the edges of the piece too, as I go. pretty good that's great um, I'll save this actually that's I think that's enough stuffing for right now we'll do our last bit of stuffing after this last round okay so for our very last round for the cake we're just gonna decrease that's it we're just gonna decrease six times six decreases all the way around uh, to bring your stitch count down from 12 to 6 so sharp decreases all the way around one two and three four five ah there we go that one didn't where do they want to do it right, but whatever. Six, last one. Okay, cut the yarn. We do not need a very long end. This is just gonna be for sewing it all the way closed and then we're just gonna pull it all the way through like that. Okay, let's stuff it fully now. Just throw in any extra stuffing that we might want on the inside. A little bit more maybe. Oh, thank you so much, Belle. Huh? Oh, th Swifty, this is a, um, hi. Oh, you're new. Welcome to the chat, Swifty. Um, this, we're making a cake for my mom's birthday. Her birthday is tomorrow. So I thought it'd be fun to make her a cake on the live stream. I actually think I want even just a little bit more stuffing. Just a, just a little bit more.
like that. And then I'm just going to make sure it's on the bottom correctly. Yeah, good job. There we go. Now we're just going to pull the stitch marker out. We don't need it anymore. And then we're just going to sew this all the way closed. A very simple sewing closed method. Um, if you don't know how to sew closed, here's just like a really quick shoop, tutorial. Um, all I do is I thread the end on a needle and then I'm just going to go through the front loops only from the last six stitches around. So if you want to try to find your first one, you count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be this one. I'm just going to go into the front loop only like that. We're just going to do that for all of these front loops around. It's going to help us sew it closed a little bit easier. This one here. This one there. A couple more. There, let's thread that back on our needle. Because we got unthreaded. And then the last front loop only right there. We're just going to pull it all the way and it'll pull that bottom really tight. See, close it up. So make sure you have all the stuffing you want before you do that. Let's turn it back out. Now I can just take this tail end or this end of this needle. We can go right down through the center and then out through pretty much anywhere we want to on the side and just pull it all the way through like that. And we can just cut this nice and close like that. And there we go. We've got our cake finished. At least the main part of the cake. I still will need to add our candle and our plate. So don't worry, the stream's not over. But that's gonna be the end of the main section for our cake, and it really does look delicious. I, I actually, I actually absolutely love that. I would totally eat that cake. Okay, let's throw our brown yarn to the side. We don't need that anymore. We will probably want our white yarn still, so I'll keep that out. We're gonna not need our green yarn, so we can put this away. And uh, I don't think we need our red yarn because we should do our candle in a different color. Maybe blue. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a nice little cake. Just a little cake. Um, okay, so next up, let's do, uh, let's look at the names. That's what we need to do. First off, let's end the poll that we had going on about the music. Looks like new music, no, keep it the same was what the vote was. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna go through and look at my four favorite names from uh, the, cho the chocolate covered strawberry live stream and choose my favorite. So in the meantime, can you get a Jimbo? No. I don't know where Jimbo is. I was gonna switch it to the cat cam, but we don't have Jimbo there. So let's go to our shorts. In the comments and let's see. Ooh, I like the name Ziggy. Okay, so we got Simple one there. Quaker dude. Uh, I think I like this name. Let's go with. Okay. All right, I got four names for the strawberry. Ready to rock and roll. Name our strawberry. Okay, so these were all your name suggestions. Boom. This is what we're naming, by the way. 
We're naming this super cool punk rock strawberry from our last live streams. Uh, and the name options are Ziggy, Berry, like Berry, Punky Squeaky. Okay, I like it. Starberry. So those are the last, those are all the name options. Got a little extra tattoo falling off him. I think I like personally, I think I like Ziggy most, but it is up to you. So go ahead and vote and uh, yeah, well, you can help me choose that name. Um, the one with the vote, most votes wins. We'll keep it out on screen right here. And then uh, let's start working on, um, let's add a candle next. So for a candle, we're gonna want, first off, we're gonna want some, a pipe cleaner. Let's see, what color though? We'll go with this, um, We'll go with this blue pipe cleaner. I think blue is a good color for a, a candle. So we'll go with that. Okay, uh, this is a pretty light, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'll just cut it, it's already in half, so that's fine. And we're gonna add a needle into the very end here. And I'm just gonna start to wind it closed around this needle. So basically twist a half of a pipe cleaner up um, for as, as long as you want the candle to be. I think that's actually even bigger than we want it. So we can go a little less than that. Okay. And then we're going to take our um, let's see, should we do yellow yarn first out the top and then do white and stuff off the sides? So we'll start by threading some yellow yarn. This is just for the candle, like the lit part of the candle at the top. We're just going to go through the very top like this, and I'm just going to go through a few times in the top, leaving it like somewhat loose here, just a couple of times. And the idea here is we're trying to create like a little flame at the top of the candle. Maybe one more time. Like that. And I'll come back through it. Like that. And now we should have just these two ends. We can cut these ends like pretty short. Like that. And hopefully it doesn't come too undone. I don't think it will. We're, we're, we're aiming for just like the the flame at the tip of the candle, by the way, with that. So hopefully that stays the way we want it to. Next up, we want uh, the main color of what we want the candle to be. So because we have blue yarn, maybe we'll use a blue, I mean, blue pipe cleaner, we'll use a blue yarn. Is blue or purple? That's purple. We don't want purple. I want blue, I want blue. Where do I want blue? Oh, we have cyan. That's pretty close. Yeah, let's use a cyan. It's covered in cat fur though. Which who doesn't want cat fur in their cake, you know? Um, okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go like this. We're, so this is how I like to add, um, yarn to this, by the way, I basically hold the yarn downwards towards the bottom and then I'll fold it under the bottom like that. See, so we'll have this little tail end sticking out. We're going to wrap around this tail end as we work our way up and we'll keep that locked into place. We're just going to start winding up like this around that tail end and see how we're like, we're adding the yarn to it kind of making it a little bit cleaner, but we're also keeping that 
cyan tail end in place as we go. Get up towards the top. Once we get close to the top, like right here, we can cut this tail end super short like that. And then we can cut our yarn, maybe about like that long is fine. And I'll thread this end onto our needle. There we go. And we're just gonna go into the loop that we created at the top here a few times to keep this yarn locked into place at the top and kind of fill in the top of this pipe cleaner so that we don't have any of the pipe cleaner fuzz like sticking out. Maybe like this. Oops, we lost our needle. And yeah, we're gonna do it striped. We're gonna add a white stripe to it. So don't you worry about that, Emerald Turtle. And we'll go in again. Like that. And then here's the fun trick for adding yarn to the end here, is we can place our needle downwards like this and wrap around the needle, but keep it like up like this. But if we can wrap our yarn back around the needle, actually, you know, it, this would be a little nicer if we had a smaller needle. So I'm gonna unthread that one. Let's use a slightly thinner needle like this one. And we'll hold it down like this way. Oops, like this way. And we're just gonna wrap our yarn around that needle as we go down. Oh shoot, wait. Or did I want it to go up? I think I wanted this needle to go up. So let's undo that. Oops. Okay, let's try this again. Pointing upwards like this. I'm gonna wrap around the needle. Let's try this again, here we go. Wrap around the needle all the way down to the bottom. Or close-ish to the bottom, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, like that. Thread this on into the center, I mean the hole of the needle that and then pull the needle through all that yarn that you wrapped it around like this. This is a technique I figured out in high school. Like that. And it'll hold all of that yarn in place and we can just cut this nice and close. And there we go. We have a wrapped it wrapped in cyan now. And then now the last thing we want to do for our candle here, other than just like fixing the flame a little bit, is we want to add just a white, I think that it'd be fun to add just like a little bit of white texture to it. So I think the easiest way here is probably actually using this needle again, thread the white yarn. If I can. And let's try going up the, let's see, how's the best, let's actually, let's try going down into some of these threads like this. We'll go work our needle all the way down to come out the bottom, pull it out if we can. We might want actually pliers for this. Wait, where did I put my pliers? I remember thinking yesterday, I was like, hey, why are my pliers here? Man, where'd I put them? I remember thinking yesterday. Oh, there they are. I found them.
Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna grab the end here for like that. Okay. Pull as much as we want. And then I'm just gonna cut this end nice and short there. We're almost all the way through. Now I'm gonna wrap this up the piece to create kind of a, like a stripe thing like that. And then I'm gonna go back in through the center here. Like this. Okay, now we have like, see we have like a little white stripe on the candle. Pretty thick candle, but whatever. Uh, and then the last thing we want to do is we want this thread back into all of the cyan yarn. Just at least for like a few stitches, like maybe down to like there. And we're going to use our pliers again to get a better grip on that. Just pull that through and this should lock that yarn into place also. And we'll just cut this nice and close like that. Push that over, hide that end in a little bit better. Okay, and there we go, we got a little candle. And to make this so it fits right into the top here, I'm just gonna twist these, the ends a little bit here. Just a bit, oops, maybe we should twist it the other way actually. Yeah. So we're just gonna twist it a bit and then cut, I usually like to cut one end and then cut another end a little bit longer than the first one. And then we're gonna take this, well, first off, let's fix that white there. We're gonna take this and put it straight to the top of our candle. I mean, of our cake. Like this, twist it in. Cause then we can make it removable too. And there we go, we got a little tiny candle in the top of our cake. And I'm gonna go ahead and like thread the ends of this yellow to make it more flame-like too. And maybe cut this end a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that looks great. I love that. Okay, so we got a candle. Uh, last thing I wanna do is add a plate. And I don't think this is really that necessary, but um, Morgana was asking for it, so I thought maybe it'd be nice. Ooh, Amy, good question. Um, should we use a different color, by the way? Maybe we should use this cyan color for the plate. What do you think? Any any questions there? Any questions about, uh, or any any comments about how to use, like what color to make the plate, or any questions about how we made uh, any of the parts there, the candle itself, or anything like that? Um, and then while you guys are asking that, let me answer a couple questions that I didn't get through as I went. Um, did I design this on the spot? Yes, I did. I designed the whole cake so far. Uh, yep, all this was done on the spot. I have never designed this cake before. Um, I've done techniques like this for candles and stuff, but never one like that. So yeah, it was all made up right here. Um, I think I'm very good at crocheting. Uh, <laughs> um, another question. Um, someone said, do I sell any of these? So I don't sell any of my crochet yet, um, but I have been really strongly considering selling my crochet in the future. Um, the main idea right now that I've been thinking about doing is doing a, um, like a raffle, or not a raffle, a, um, I'm 
bidding. What's it called when you bid? An auction. I was thinking of starting to do a live stream auctions. So like during the live stream, there's an auction for what we made last week or something. So that like you can support the channel if you want. And that'd be a good way for me to sell the, um, the finished projects too, because I never really know exactly how much to sell it for. So I think an auction might like kind of give everybody an opportunity to try to do it. So that's kind of what I've been thinking. Um, if you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments, actually, that'd be really great. Um, a blue and white plate to match the candle. I like that idea, Amy. That's fun. Like we could change colors, um, too, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, don't worry about the, the explanation for the candle, Cooper. I'll, I'll handle that myself. Um, but I really appreciate that you even tried. You definitely didn't need to do that. Um, what are we going to name the cake? We're definitely going to, uh, have my mom name the cake. So I'll have her name the cake later. Um, oh yeah. Someone asked any tips on blocking crochet projects to make them lay flat. Yes, I do. Um, Jules blocks projects quite a lot. She has this, like these really cool, like foam pads that she uses. And basically what she does is she like soaks the, her crochet or knit projects in yarn. I mean, in, in water, and then she pins them on her um on on like these big foam pads so you know what i'll actually i'll work with her maybe we can do a tutorial together that might be really helpful um for you guys and i know she'd be really good at doing one of those tutorials so i'll work with her on doing a tutorial for blocking uh projects to um to maybe help you out there amy um okay Okay, okay, okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right, cool. Seems like we got a lot of people saying we should do blue for the plate. So let's go ahead and do that. The plate's going to be pretty, uh, pretty simple. Um, basically, we're just going to be increasing it larger than the bottom of this is. Doing a little round for um, like a stand for the plate and then doing some fancy footwork on the edge of the plate to make it kind of a fancier plate. So we're gonna start by doing a magic loop with the, the um, our yarn here. And like I said, we're using our blue yarn to make it match the candle at the top. So we'll go ahead and throw these guys to the side, give a little bit more room for the video. Actually, let's put our, can our cake right here. All right, so we're gonna start with the magic loop and we're gonna do round one. Uh, it's gonna, a lot of this actually is gonna be very similar to the cake itself um, and should be relatively simple. So we're gonna start round one by doing six single crochets into the magic loop. Not too crazy, um, just six single crochets into the magic loop. And hey, if you like this video, again, please consider liking uh, down below, subscribing to the channel if you've never subscribed before. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll use a little bit of this just for keeping track of the ends for you guys. I don't need it. I don't need no stinking stitch marker. No, but... It is nice to uh, keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. <laughs> pull that through. Pull the stitch marker around. And we'll continue on to round two of the plate. For round two, I'm just going to be working into all of the stitches we made in round one. And we're just going to do an increase into every single stitch around to go up from six stitches to 12 stitches around. Uh, make sure to work around your tail end like this as you go. Uh, just to keep it locked in and so that you can just hide this end on the inside as you go. Uh, I'm just going to work around it for the entirety of round two here and just continue doing an increase in every single stitch all the way around. One and two. All right, and I'll just go ahead and cut our cyan nice and close. And keep going pull our stitch marker up and we'll continue on to round three 
Uh, yes, please vote on the name. We have 40 votes so far, and it looks like one of those names is winning by kind of a long shot, which is great. It's not the one I voted for, but that's totally fine. It's not up to me. It is a really pretty blue, right? Style and leather. Yeah, this is part of our, um, this is actually part of the yarn in this uh, season's crochet kit, uh, our cyan color. It's also called sky blue is what we, what we call it too. Um, for round three, we're doing a single crochet into our first stitch, which I just did, and then an increase into the next stitch right here. Boop, and boop. And we're going to repeat that process six times around to go up from 12 to six or to 18 stitches around. So you should have 18 stitches by the end of round three, which we're currently working on. One. Two, three, and the question that I have on my head right now is how big do we want to make the base of our plate? You know, like, so we're going to have a little tiny rim of, of the, of the plate, like standing up, like to help like the plate stay upright. So it's not just like a big flat circle. It actually looks more like a plate. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that the bottom should be as wide as the cake. That's what I think. Okay, so we're just keep, gonna keep going now. Uh, for round one, two, three, four, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. Uh, that's gonna bring you up from 18 to 24 stitches around. What size is my yarn? Uh, so our Club Crochet Amigurumi Cotton Yarn uh, is our special, special yarn, and it is worsted weight size. Um, it's a little kind of like a thick worsted weight. Um, the reason I, that it's a little bit thicker is that it is uh, comprised of like a multiply fiber. So basically, normally yarn is like a, a certain ply, which means that there's a certain amount of strands that are woven and or that are spun around in a circle to make the yarn yarn uh and normally for yarn uh at least for cotton yarn normally it's a four ply yarn which is kind of the case here we do have a four ply yarn it is four strands woven together but each of those individual strands is uh are themselves compiled of i think a six ply so if you look like really close here you'll see I know I'm going into detail here for a simple little question, but it does answer the question pretty well. So see how like there's four strands here, but each one of these strands themselves has like one, two, three, four, five, I think six strands, maybe five. Anyhow, the reason I'm bringing that up is because doing that makes it a lot like like a thicker like slightly thicker than just a, a worsted weight i mean it is still worsted weight but it's just a little bit thicker it also makes it way more dense it's a very dense yarn um which i really think is great for amigurumi but it's also really great for um beginner crocheters because it's really hard to accidentally split the yarn um okay Sorry, I forgot to uh, say what this next round was. So that was round one, two, three, four. Round five, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around to go up to uh, 30 stitches around. So we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around, which is gonna bring us up to 30 stitches around. Get our cat fur out of this yarn as we go. We're almost done, by the way. Um, once we finish this plate, I think that'll be it. Uh, it's kind of a long live stream today, but thank you guys so much for for joining and being a part of it. Super appreciated. Thank you all for your feedback. Thank you all for uh, wishing my mom a happy birthday. I think we're going to Buca de Beppo for her birthday. So it should be pretty fun. And I hope she likes the new little cake that we crocheted her. Um, okay, just a few more stitches in round five here. 
and four and five. Okay. We're going to do one more round like normal because we do want this to be bigger than the cake itself. So we want one more round like normal. So what we're going to do on this next round, round six is we're just going to do four single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. Sorry, I wanted to check the battery on my computer real quick. Okay, so one, two, three, and four single crochets, and then an increase after that, repeating six times. That's gonna bring us up from 30 stitches to 36 stitches around, which is gonna be the, uh, the final stitch count for this round. And then I've got a, a plan. I got a plan after that. Oh, that's, uh, you know, I could do that, Zoe. I know people do that a lot. They stagger um, stitches to make them less hexagonal rounds and more round. The thing is, because I'm gonna be adding like a lacy kind of texture to the end of this, I don't think it really matters, um, but you definitely, I definitely could do that. Um, stagger increases around. I should do a tutorial on why, like how to do that and why you might wanna do that. Um, I personally, don't really mind the hexagonal look that much because it's yarn so I can like usually kind of like twinge it to like make it more round but you're probably right if we wanted a really nice um, rounded end we probably would want to stagger the the increases a bit um is the com uh, How's the computer? Were you able to get the battery fixed? You know, I haven't taken it in yet, but it's not acting badly today. I really should have taken it in this week. But I didn't. Um, okay, so that's going to be the end of that round. Pull our stitch marker up. Okay, so now here is where we're going to get a little tricky. The first thing is, uh, so this is as wide as the cake is. So I think that right here is where we're going to start to differentiate um the first thing that i think we should do is do another round of increasing but working into the um working into the front loops only leaving the back loops open for around uh, another round of maybe like slip stitches around that way it gives like the plate like a little bit of a stand on top of it and then after doing a round of increasing we'll do like something fun with the white yarn to create like a frilly edge to the plate so let's start by doing a, a round of increasing working into the front loops only so we're on round seven now and for round seven we're going to work into the front loops only all the way around only in these front ones and we're going to do um six or one two three four five single crochets and then an increase repeat it all the way around working into these front loops only so one two three four and five and then our increase one two three yeah one two three four and five and then our increase right here like that see so it's creating it like it's going to make it angle up just a little bit and then we're going to work stitches into those unused back loops only to create like a uh, just a little bit of a base so that the plate stands up a little bit cleaner. I'm also gonna start trying to crochet just a little bit tighter. That's not really that important. It's just what I'm gonna try to do, just so that the edge of this plate has a little bit more of a, um, uh, like a little bit more density and a little bit more structure to it. Um, so I'm trying to crochet just like barely a little tighter. I don't know what I'm going to do for the round after this just yet. I know I want to do some kind of like frilly thing, uh, but let's find out. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Crochet Love is making some digital art for the cake, uh, but you're not sure if it has a mouth. It does have a mouth. Check it out. It's got just this little simple smile right there. Oh my God, that's so cool. I can't wait to see it. Crochet Love, please send that over to me once you're done. That's so cool. It, uh, you can either post it, I guess you can post it on like Instagram or you can just send it to us on Discord or you can send it, I guess you can email it to me too if you wanted to. It's one, two, three, four, five, and then our increase out. Like that. Two. That's so cool though. I really can't wait to see artwork for it. I like that. Uh, yeah, Cooper has a little, um, that, that little tool icon next to it because, uh, he is a moderator for the, uh, live streams so that he can, you know, help me make sure that everything's running smoothly. He's extremely helpful. One, two, three, four, and five, and then our increase right here. Okay, now is where we might get tricky here. So first off, place our cake into place. That looks pretty good. Do we want to add any more width to this plate before we do something fancy? I think we might want to do one more round of increasing. What do you think? Because if we did one more round of increasing and then did a frilly end. No, maybe we'll just do a frilly end here. Let's just try doing a frilly end in the blue. You know, because maybe that'll be like a little bit cleaner. And if we don't want it, then we can come back, remove it and do it again in a different color. Okay, so let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches between here. So if we did, maybe if we did a hmm, slip at the end here. So if we did a chain double, double, or chain double, double chain double, skip double, double chain double, skip double, or, or we could do a slip after that. So it'd be dupe, skip, slip, skip, dupe, skip, slip. Skip, slip, skip, doop, 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 skip, slip, skip, doop. Ah, that won't end right. We want to end on a slip. So we got to do threes then. So one, two, three. So slip. Skip, dupe, skip, slip, skip, dupe, skip, slip. Skip, dupe, skip, slip, skip, dupe, skip, slip, skip, scoop, dupe. Skip, slip, skip, dupe, skip, slip, skip, dupe. Dupe, skip, slip, skip, dupe. Skip, slip, skip, dupe. Skip, slip, skip. Slip. Maybe we need a dupe there. You know, maybe we can dupe in the slip. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. I don't think that's gonna work. Okay, so let's try. Skip, slip, chain one. Double. Like that. No. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'll, sorry, I'm just thinking. 
I mean, we could do like the simple frill that we did before, but I think I want to do something a little fancier. Fancier. I'm practicing spells, yes. Skip, 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 doop, dee. <laughs> oh, we think we should do one more round first. Okay, we'll do one more round first. That actually might help with my uh, skip, 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 So, okay, yeah, I think you're right. Let's do one more round. So we'll do another round of one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets, and then an increase repeated all the way around six times around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then an increase, seven and eight eight and then we'll repeat that process six times total uh which will bring us up to 48 stitches around is that right one two yeah 48 three four five six then our increase here two three, four, five, six, and then seven and eight. Okay, now in the next round, just like preparing myself, it would be skip there, slip there, or yeah, skip there, slip there, skip there, do something fancy. Skip there, slip there, and then skip there. Okay, let's see if we do that again. We went slip, skip, bloop, skip, and then repeat it. Skip, slip, skip, bloop. No, see, that won't be enough. Oh, yeah, it will actually skip. Blue. Yeah, it will. Okay. That'll work. I got a plan. Okay, so now we should have 48 stitches around. Let's look at it with our cake. Cake. Shooty whoop. Here we go. Yeah, that was probably a good move. That was probably a good move. Okay, now we're gonna do our fancy footwork. Let's do it. We're gonna do a slip stitch into the first, and then we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna skip a stitch, and we're gonna do a half double crochet into the next, and then a peacock. A peacock's gonna be chain two, slip stitch into the first chain that you made. I'm gonna call that a mini peacock. Yeah. And then another half double crochet into that same stitch. I actually don't think I need to do a chain between that. Okay, let me do that again. So slip stitch one, skip a stitch, and then into the next stitch we're half double crochet one. And let's do a regular peacock. Chain three, slip stitch into the first chain that we made and then half double crochet into the same stitch, like that. Will that work? And then skip a stitch again, and then repeat that process over. So let's do it again. Slip stitch one, after we skip the stitch, and then we skip a stitch, and we do a half double crochet here with a peacock. Oh, the peacock kind of bends in though. See how it's like kind of turning in? So maybe we do change that to a mini pico instead. It's a pretty simple edge, but it does kind of look a little bit clean, like fun. Let's do it into a mini pico instead. So I'm gonna go back. Okay. Mini pico, so that's chain two only. Actually, you know, we're just gonna chain two and then half double crochet into the same stitch. We don't even need to do a mini pico. It'll be more rounded, but it'll be cleaner. Okay, so that's the that's the process. Then skip a stitch, and then repeat the process. Slip stitch one. And then that repeat's gonna be like 12 times, I think, repeated around. Pico, right? 
Um, yes, this will this part this part will be on the written pattern. Yeah, I don't think we. I don't think I'm gonna do white. I think I'm just gonna do it in blue. So let's do it again. Uh, we're gonna repeat that process all the way around. So we slip stitch one, which we just did. Then we skip a stitch, and then we half double crochet one, chain two, half double crochet one into the same stitch. Boom. And then we and then we skip a stitch and we repeat that process. So skip. So slip stitch one after the skip. Skip a stitch, half double crochet one, chain two, half double crochet one into the same stitch. And so you're just gonna make this like rounded little like kind of shell around the edge, which will I think will look pretty nice with our cake. Okay, skip a stitch, slip stitch one, skip a stitch, half double crochet one, chain two, half double crochet one. Then skip one and slip stitch one after that. Right? See how it's like kind of making this like fun little edge ink? My only problem here that does want to bend up because of the way that, but actually bending up isn't a bad thing, right? Like it'll look like that. Might cover the face slightly, but it'll look kind of cute. I think, I think it will. Or we can fold it down like that. If we did a chain between the slip stitches, it might flatten it out better, but I think it kind of looks more like a plate this way. So we'll keep going. Um, all right, so we started that next repeat. We slip stitched, we skip one, we half double crochet one, we chain two, half double in the same stitch, and then skip stitch. And then repeat the process. Slip one, skip one, half double, chain two, half double in the same stitch, skip one. Slip stitch one. And at the end, we're probably gonna have to slip stitch to connect everything. Skip one, half double, chain two, half double and the same. Yes, the pattern's definitely gonna be on the uh, on the website after this um, Swifty. It might be available for members exclusively very soon, um, but for today and like after the stream tonight, I'll put it on the website. <laughs> And then, uh, and then maybe Monday, um, I'll make it for members exclusively. Yeah, actually, I could try blocking it to lay it flat, too. Like that. I mean, even just, like, stretching it like that worked pretty well. You see how it's making, like, that kind of nice shell on the outside? Gives it a little bit more of a plate look. Okay, skip one, half double. Chain two half double in the same stitch. This might be just a cute coaster thing too. Skip one and slip. And skip one and do our half double trick. Half double, chain two. Thank you for the bus use. Skip one, slip stitch. Okay, this is gonna be the last one here. Skip one and we'll half double, chain two. Half double in the same stitch. Uh, and then to finish this up, we're gonna skip one and we're gonna slip stitch into the same place that we slip stitched right in the beginning. So right here, same stitch, just slip stitched into that one, like that. And we can cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end. We'll just pull it all the way through like that. 
And I'm just going to actually pull it on the inside of our piece. So I'm just going to thread this onto our needle. And I'm just going to pull this into the inside here. Like that. Let's see how this looks. Does that look good or should I do a hidden end to try to like hide that a little bit better? Eh, it's not too bad. That's pretty good. Let's see what our cake would look like in it. It looks pretty good with the cake. It does need to have that extra layer though to give it some height, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay, so we're, I'm just gonna hide this end on the inside here. I'm also gonna pull this, our stitch marker out because we don't need that. So I'm just gonna hide this end in a few stitches, like one, two, three, five, maybe like that. And then we're gonna do uh, a layer on these unused back loops only two to add some height. Whoa, deja vu. Having deja vu. Weird. Okay, let's get our yarn again. And I'm gonna add a layer on these unused um, back loops only from round, what was that, round six? So I think these are round sixes unused back loops only. We're gonna do, I think we can do just a slip stitch into each of them and it'll make a really nice clean bottom of our piece. So I'm gonna make a loop with our cyan here. I'm going to pull a loop through our first unused back loop only right here. Actually, it's kind of better to go even before that. So if you go like right here, it might even look better. Well, whatever, we'll put it there then. Pull a loop through like that. So pull a loop through the first unused back loop only. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch into every stitch around. And as I go, you wanna take this tail end and continuously like weave it in and out so that we're working around it. Wait, how do I do that? I weave it over like this and slip stitch one then into the next one like that slip stitch one we can also just like hide this end on the inside so after i've done that a few times maybe i'll just leave it off to the side and i'll hide the end but i think this should give us like a little bit of height and make it look a little bit more like a plate so we're just going to slip stitch into all of these unused back loops only Kind of making it a little bit more of a bowl so we will definitely have to try to stretch it out a little bit um, and it might have been better to do like a double crochet or or a chains in between the half double crochets in that last round but whatever we did what we did and now i'm just slip stitching into the back loops and you can kind of see how it's making see how it's making like a little bit of a just a little bit of a row there to help it like sit a little higher on the whatever platform we put it on. Okay. And almost done. And then we'll just do a hidden end. And I'll try to stretch this out a little bit to make the plate a little bit more flat because it is rolling in on itself a lot. So I'll try to fix that a little bit. It'd be nice if I had like a starch kind of thing because I know one thing that you can do is you can put like a glue water mixture together and you can spray your crochet and it'll harden into that position, which might be really cool for this plate but I don't really know how to do that just yet so it's something I'll have to research okay and I'm, I'm going to uh, cut the yarn here like that pull it through and we're gonna hide this end into the first slip stitch that we made and then we'll hide the other end in as well so we're just gonna hide it in like this 
like that into the inside of that last one and then into the bottom of a few stitches here just to make sure it's really hidden on the inside and then with this other tail end i'm going to do the same we're just going to hide this onto the inside of a few stitches here just to really make sure everything is locked into place and that nothing comes undone like that okay and we'll cut these ends nice and short boop and boop and let's stretch out our crochet a bit to make it more purdy okay and we'll Boop it on the inside so that it kind of rolls up like a plate a little bit more. There it is from the top. Here it is from the side. And here it is from the bottom. Place our little cupcake or cupcake or cake cake there. And voila. Wait, hold on. I want to insert this a little bit better. Like that. There we go, a little tiny cake on a plate for my mom for her birthday. Here's what it is sitting up. Oh, it looks so cute. I wish you could see it from my perspective. I mean, it looks really cute from this perspective too, but when you lower it down towards the ground, it looks really cute like this. Super duper adorable. Oh, that's so cute. All right, mom, I'll bring this to your birthday party tomorrow. Oh, I love it. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this impromptu design along pattern. Um, I think it went pretty well, all things considered. Not too shabby. Not going to lie. Not too shabby. Uh, pretty proud of that. So this pattern is going to be available on the website uh, tonight. Uh, I'll work on it late. Uh, it probably won't be up till like pretty late tonight because I do need to like get pictures and all that other fun stuff. Um, and then uh, it'll be available for free for uh, until at least till Monday. And then after that, I'll make it probably exclusive for membership level accounts. So you'll need a membership level to access it and download it and all that other fun stuff. Uh, we'll be live again next Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, doing another crochet along live. Uh, next Friday, we're going to do a free-for-all. So I don't really know what I'm going to make yet. So I just got to think it through. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you next Friday. Uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss it when we do those live crochet alongs, all you need to do is uh, probably like this video down below so that the algorithm knows that you like it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so that you don't miss it when we uh, come out with new live streams and new videos like that. Um, and then uh, uh, and then another way you can make sure you don't miss the live crochet longs is create an account on my website. If you go to clubcrochet.com, you can create a free account on that website. You'll need a free account to access this pattern anyhow uh, until Monday. So, uh, but if you create an account on the website, you'll be added to the newsletter and you'll get an email notification for the next live crochet long. Um, time zone, we are in the Pacific Standard Time Zone. So currently right now it is 4.05 p.m. Uh, on Friday, uh, my time. So, yeah. Uh, okay, and the strawberry name, we need to finalize the strawberry name. We have chosen our strawberry from last week is now named Starberry. Of course, it's named Starberry. It looks like a superhero. Starberry, the punk rock strawberry. I love it. Look at those tattoos. I'm so proud of that skull. It looks so good. All right, guys. <laughs> I love it. Uh, thanks again to Ty for the, the gift. If you ever want to send me um, fan mail, uh, the my mailing address is at the bottom of the emails. So if you get an email notification from me, uh, at the very bottom will be the mailing list. Um, I think it's also somewhere on the website. Um, okay, guys. Another quick look at our cute little cake. It's so cute. I love it. Oh, I hope my mom likes it. My aunt's going to be super jealous. Um, okay, guys. Pasta La Pizza. Happy hooking. And uh, thanks again for watching. Super appreciated. Um, all right. Bye. Oh my gosh. Stop. Oh my gosh. No, you hang up first.
No, you. No, I'm sorry, but you gotta hang up first. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, I'm obsessed with this backdrop that I made. I'm gonna redo this backdrop probably for the space-themed crochet kit, but like, look at how cool it is. Wouldn't this be a really cool video game? I'd be so into that. I gotta, I gotta do something with that. Okay, anyhow, bye.